if I trust this guy. Was jetzt? Was sollen wir machen? Hmm. Oh, they all got masks. I read that the handprint. Recognize one of the Avengers. I knew it. Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you know. <laughs> Ask for Might it. Take a keep selfie. Keeping my family's business afloat. Your financials are all over the place. Is, is there mm. some kind of fund for heroes? Or did Stark pay you when he was around? You couldn't have been living off of goodwill this whole time. I don't get what you're going for here. No you income over the last five years. How can mm. you have income if you don't exist? Sarah. It's true. Uh, <laughs> you qualify for an SBA loan. Under the old terms, sure. But these days... Funny how things always tighten around us. Whoa, easy there. Look, hmm. I'm on your side. After all, he's a hero. Then help. Is there any chance... Of course you could say no, that I could get a selfie with your arms out? Are you serious? <laughs> we cannot approve you. I'm truly sorry. Like, that can't... Like, you have to be able to do something. I don't want to deal with this again. <sighs> well, that's what life is, dealing with this. You are so out of pocket for that. Don't forget, you joined the Air Force. You didn't see everything mom and daddy dealt with. You had to go off and fight armies and monsters. And I appreciate that. But you don't get to come back here and try to right your wrongs just because you couldn't deal with what was going on here. I'm the one who kept that boat from sinking. Yeah, well, half the boat's mine, and so is the house. We're not selling our family's legacy. Uh, then you gotta figure out a way, man. You gotta figure out a way. You can't just cry about it and say no and let your family suffer. <laughs> Bucky. Oh. So this is the leader of the Flag Smashers, huh? Yeah, real nice guy. I thought you were supposed to be monitoring them online. He's strong. He was. I mean, bro, it went dark as soon as it was He's all over. So but that's their MO. What are you thinking? Nothing. Wait, you don't think he could be a... But I'll circle back to you. Look at this. Unrest in the wake uh -oh. of recent events has left us vulnerable to put their lives on the line so to defend Earth. We also need a hero to defend this country. We need someone to inspire us again. So, on behalf of the Department of Defense and our Commander-in-Chief of America has a new hero. Ooh. Join me in welcoming your new Captain America. Who the F is that? We know what we have to do. Flip through all the credits. No, you get back here. I've seen WandaVision. We've all seen WandaVision. All right, there's a lot to unpack there. A lot to unpack there. I got my handy dandy notebook. Let's do this. So it starts off with Falcon. He's playing superhero. He saves the military guy in superhero fashion. It's very exciting. And then we get a little more of a somber look when he's at the Smithsonian. He is giving Cap's shield to the Smithsonian because he keeps saying that it doesn't feel right. It feels like it belongs to someone else. We even see Don Cheadle. Love him. He is War Machine. We have him have a conversation with War Machine. He explains the same thing. Like, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like I should have it. I strongly disagree with this decision, but if we didn't have this, we wouldn't have a show now, would we? What makes me upset, and I feel like this is going to be addressed in the next episode, Captain America. It's Captain America. I've never been a huge fan of Captain America, but it's freaking Captain America. Gives you his shield. He's saying, I trust you. I think that you could carry this legacy on. He 
made that decision respect his decision i get that it doesn't feel right and it feels like it belongs to someone else i i get the meaning in that it's like you can't like like thor's hammer you can't wield the hammer unless you're worthy of it i understand that but i think captain america knows what he's talking about like captain america picks you feel like he might know what he's talking about and he doesn't want to make a mockery of it i i understand that but Considering the way the government works and the way they are with the Avengers and the superheroes, did he really not think that they weren't going to just replace Captain America? It's one of those things where, like, everybody looks up to Captain America. He's this icon. He's this symbol of, like, hope and safety. And Captain America specifically, you can't not have a Captain America. You can't. People are going to be sad and upset and scared. You have to replace that safety net that feeling of comfort and that's what they did with this new person who the freak is that I have no idea who that guy is he kind of reminds me of Marty McFly's father <laughs> in Back to the Future I again was not a huge fan of Captain America. I've seen Winter Soldier. I've seen the first Captain America. I've seen the Captain Americas, but it was what I'm trying to say, but I don't know too much in depth about their stories specifically, which is, again, why I... Another reason why I watched Wanda. I didn't know Wanda Maximoff's story very in depth. I don't know Falcon's story very in depth. I don't know Sam's story, so to get this background information on him and these characters is really cool. I don't know the little side characters in this, and I don't know if we're supposed to know certain people. So if it is a spoiler in regards to what happens in the comics... I would say don't comment on it. If it's not a spoiler and it's like, oh, this person was in the first Captain America movie, like Torres. It's Sam's Sam's friend Torres. I don't know if we're supposed to know him. He looks familiar, but I don't know if that's just me thinking that the actor looks familiar or if I've seen him in an Avenger or a Captain America movie. If you're like, hey, no, he was in the first Captain America movie. He's this guy. Then comment down below and let me know. If it's somebody that you know from the comics, don't say anything because I don't want to know. I want to learn through the show. And then we'll kind of get a groove of seeing where the show's going, if it's going to apply to the comics or not. Because Wanda didn't. Wanda did with certain things, obviously, as we know. Spoiler alert in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Agatha. But I didn't know that. I didn't know who Agatha or Agnes was. And people did know from the comics. And obviously it's really hard to avoid spoilers like that. So I eventually heard about Agatha and Agnes and then talked about it in the comments. But what I'm trying to say is don't say anything. <laughs> Just don't. No spoilers. Like no spoilers at all. I want to be surprised. I want to learn through the show. So yeah. So he gives up the shield. And I that kind of... Like, again, I get it. It doesn't feel like it belongs to him, but it kind of pissed me off because I feel like it's almost insulting. Like, I get he, he doesn't want to make a mockery out of the shield, but I almost feel like it's insulting to Captain America to be choosing you. I pick you and I have faith in you. And then you're like, here, give the shield to a museum. Poor Bucky. Bucky, Bucky, Bucky. Bucky is going through some major PTSD. The government pardons him. He's seeing a therapist now. He's trying to go back into real life and live a normal life, but he is so messed up. His mind is so warped from everything that has happened with Hydra. He keeps having these terrible nightmares. He is, has no friends, no family. He lives alone, and he is trying to make amends with people. Now, this is typically something that uh, people that deal with addiction have to go through, or the 12-step program, it's one of the steps. He is trying to make amends with people to clear his conscience, clear his mind, and come to terms with what has happened in his life. So the first thing that we see is a flashback, if you will. It's a dream sequence, but it's a dream sequence of a flashback of him breaking into somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but he's breaking into somewhere and he kills this young man. And I 
I've, this is, it's like these moments where I'm disappointed in myself for not catching this, it, but it's also good writing to make you so distracted by the storyline that you didn't pick up on that. The man ends up being the son of Mr. Nakajima. He's getting sushi with Nakajima. Mochi tells this whole story about his son, how he likes the red bean mochi, and he doesn't know how he died, and that's what upsets him. And oh my gosh, I, it just broke my heart. And you end up finding out that that was his son, and he and Nakajima is on his list of people to make amends. Oh my gosh, it broke my heart. Because you could see that like he, Mr. Nakajima is his only friend. Is the only person that he sees and that he hangs out with and he really does like and he likes to spend time with. Oh my gosh. It like that broke my heart. That broke my heart to see. But the girl, I can't remember her name. The girl he takes out on a date or goes on a date with they play battleship. I thought that was really cute. He gets her flowers and she kind of triggers him by bringing this up and talking about how Mr. Nakajima, I think the hardest part for him is he doesn't know how his son died. And that's the whole point of Bucky being friends with him and trying to make amends with him is to tell him that he is the one who killed his son. Oh my gosh, that is so difficult to have to look somebody in the eye and tell them that. It's... Hmm. And, and dealing with all of the PTSD on top of it, that's the other thing too. It's like, he is so emotionally distraught, he wants to be left alone and just separate himself from everything so that he can just go through these painful motions by himself and not have to involve anybody else in them anymore, kind of. And it's just, oh my gosh, it's, oh, he's avoiding Sam's texts and I, I he doesn't, he's blocking everybody off, but I feel like this is how... The, the ending of what we saw of the new Captain America is going to tie Sam and Bucky in together. Like, I think he is now going to... I feel like Sam is going to possibly send him one more text message and be like, yo, did you see what the hell happened? And then this is when Bucky's going to be like, okay, I need to answer. Because he's... I don't think Bucky's going to be happy about this, too. Sam was visibly upset, as I would be, too. Because clearly he knows now that he made the wrong decision, and he's pissed off at himself and at the government. And it's going to upset Bucky, too. Bucky's not going to like that. Bucky's going to be like, who the heck is this guy taking his place my best friend's place this is not captain america he's not gonna like that we meet sarah who is sam's sister and i love this dynamic this like family normalcy uh, human connections and emotions through just a, your average human which we are which is interesting to see so sarah you find out is his sister who has two kids she is a widow their parents are deceased and she it appears that she is running their family fishing business they have a family fishing boat that is decrepit and breaking and she kind of i assume took over the business when the parents died and now Sam had been gone for five years from the blip and he has not helped at all during those five years obviously because he was gone but the key thing here is that you can tell he didn't help before the blip either so he was off playing military superhero man and Sarah was left all alone by herself trying to uphold the family business trying to feed her children trying to just make a living and he it, it leads you to believe that he kind of ignored all of that he kind of left her to all of that and just didn't help so now he comes back after all this time and he's like no you can't sell the family boat you have to just try you have to have faith you have to do this you have to do that and sarah's like cut the shit dude like i don't have to do anything i've been trying for well over five years you've never shown any interest in helping or assisting and you can't just pop up now and be like yeah let's do this that's not fair to her so especially when he talks about the loan he, he basically like i'm an avenger I could get the loan like or like have faith like why are you being like a Debbie Downer it feels like he's saying like don't don't just be like oh we can't get a loan it's not gonna happen we can get a loan and then he sees firsthand for himself like oh 
my little Avenger card isn't going to work and we're not going to get this loan. It's one of those things where you don't want to put so much faith into it because like when you you want to have faith and you want to believe that something can happen and will happen but at the same time you don't want to be disappointed and deep down inside Sarah knows like this isn't going to happen and he wants to believe it he wants to save the family boat that's their legacy and I get that I'm that way too where I'm nostalgic over things and I'm like I can't let this go or we can't sell this or we can't do that but at the same time what am I doing to save it? What am I doing to prevent it? Like, what am I doing to not have that happen? You can't just let everybody else keep cleaning up your mistakes or saving the things that you want because you want them. And I think he kind of starts to understand that. I thought that was a really interesting parallel also where the when they go to the guy for the loan, he's like, you're an Avenger. Like, didn't Tony leave you money? Or, like, doesn't the government take care of you? And it's, it's kind of an interesting parallel to our military people nowadays where we have these veterans that come back that have served so much time for America, for our people, for our freedom. And then they can't get into VA hospitals. There's no funding for them. There's no jobs for them after they leave the military. It's really upsetting. It's really sad. You would just assume or think that there would be. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize there's not and they need a lot of help. And you, it's like interesting to think that parallel with superheroes, like you're a superhero, you're a falcon, like what do you need a loan for? Can't you just like fly wherever you want, do wherever you want? No, you can't. We have to talk about the flag smashers. These are our, I say these because they're a group, of course there's going to probably be one head honcho, which I feel like we saw in that scene where they're stealing the money from the bank, I believe it was, he had the two bags. The Flag Smashers are a group of people who liked the blip. They believed in open borders, no borders, and a united land, if you will. So they thought that the blip was good. They didn't like the fact that billions of people came back. Now, obviously, you want your family back. You want your friends back. A majority of people, obviously, were happy that these people came back, but... As always, there's always going to be an anti-something for that positive thing, unfortunately. And so that's what the Flag Smashers are. They they want the blip. They liked it. They liked the open borders. They liked the snap. So I think their main goal and objective is to just recruit members into their group and into their organization to be on their side. I don't know necessarily where they're gonna go and proceed forward with that like are they gonna try to have another blip happen I don't know how they would uh, uh, accomplish that but it's it's a very very interesting antagonist I really am digging that I like that and I want to learn more about it I want to know more about it I know that there was they showed a girl in the trailer who looked pretty badass, who looked like a, 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 an antagonist, but I don't know, it's one of the, I, I feel like I have to watch the scene again to see who was involved, because there was a decent amount of people, and Torres is trying to go undercover and poses one of these people, and he goes up to this guy, and he's like, I have to put you under arrest. The guy just kicks him and, like, flings him. He, that dude was strong as hell. I also really like the masks with the red handprint, and I want to know more about this group and about these people. That got me really interested. I thought it was a really, really cool idea for a bad guy, or a bad organization, if you will. So, yeah, I mean, like, the main... I, Overall, I think it was a very good episode, very good opening episode, very well-rounded. I believe there are only seven total, so we only have six more of these. I don't know if they're all going to be an hour. WandaVision ranged from like 30 minutes to about 45, 50 minutes. So I'm curious to see how long the next episode is, but I'm I'm really excited to jump into it. I'm, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't think 
that I was going to enjoy it as much as I actually did. I really, really enjoyed this episode, getting an in-depth look at each of these two characters and getting a little side story started with the Flag Smashers, who I'm very interested in seeing. And I want to know who this new freaking Captain America is. Is he going to be somebody that's actually going to bring sustenance to the character that he cares about what he's doing? Or is he just going to be a weapon of the government? That's what I'm curious about. Like, is he going to actually make a difference, be paused? Like, the number one thing about Captain America was that he had morals. He always did what was right. Even if it felt like, even if he knew it would hurt a certain amount of people, if it was the right thing to do, he would do it because it was the right thing to do. He had morals. It's simply put, he had morals. And so is this going to be a person who is a weapon? Or is this going to be a person like Steve Rogers who has morals and who brings a certain kind of special something to Captain America. Regardless, piss Sam off, and I think it's going to piss Buggy off, and I think that's what's going to bring them together, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Whew. Okay, I think I can stop talking now. Excellent episode. I am in. I love it. I am hooked. Everyone throw a like up or dislike if you do or do not like what you see. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode. But no spoilers. Again, please, no spoilers. I hate spoilers. Subscribe if you have not yet. We do fun things here. Ring, ring, ring the bell to be notified when other new videos. And don't forget to check the link down in the description to my fancy schmancy new Patreon. It is $5 a month. That is $1.25 a week. It has all my unedited reactions. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is on there right now. And I have shows like Alice in Borderland, Sweet Home, Bridgerton, Riverdale, Adventure Time. We have Pen15. I have so much stuff on there, so go check it out. I have Cobra Kai Season 3. But anyway. I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to put the first episode on YouTube. And I feel like what I'm going to do with the other episodes is choose a key moment or a key scene throw that up as a reaction, and then just dissect the episode a little bit to get a conversation started in the comments. That's my favorite thing, is to talk to people about theories and ideas and just start a conversation. Because to edit an hour-long episode takes me like five hours. It is so lengthy. And so to just take a clip and splice that up, and be able to give my thoughts and opinions is about half the time, if not less. And so, unless people really, really like this. If you really like this reaction, make sure you throw a like up, subscribe, and comment. That way I know, and, and then I will continue to keep putting them up. Um, but it, it, I don't know. We're going to have to see how this does. That's it. I have to go eat some breakfast, soak everything in, and watch some of my own favorite reactors <laughs> react to this. So long, everyone. Try to make someone smile today. You never know when you might need it next. Bye.